blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> have, blah, blah, blah. Raise your hand if you don't have a homeschool room. That would be me. We live in a little three bedroom, two bath house, which means there is no actual homeschool room. So to answer the question, do you have to have a homeschool room? The short answer would be no. I wanna show you how we have just made it work in our current home. I'm going to share where we do our lessons and where we keep our resources. I'm also gonna give you a little tour of our space, literally, it's little, but I think you're gonna enjoy this. My friend Tony from R50 Homeschool, who shares on all the things homeschool thrifty life and a personal friend of mine has asked several ladies to share their homeschool spaces and their homeschool rooms so when you are done here you can check out that playlist that's going to be linked below these are other homeschool moms that are just making it work in their homes and be sure to stop by tony's channel as well i always love her practical and frugal ideas for her homeschool and family that collab again is going to be linked below so if you are new here, our family of eight has been homeschooling for over 15 years and we just graduated our two oldest and are currently homeschooling a ninth grader, a fourth grader, a first grader, and our three-year-old is just tagging along for it all. Now, we are pretty non-traditional in our homeschool, which means we do not have desks and I don't exactly require a particular place for our children to sit while they do their lessons. So. Our couch is where we gather for morning basket time. The counter is where many lessons take place as it's the center of our home and I can keep an eye on everyone and everything that's going on in this location. And sometimes we do need things to be quiet so we will use our playroom which is off to one end of the house, close the door and that offers a place to concentrate. Now for the independent work, the kids like to just sit and do their own thing. They'll sit in hammocks, under a shade tree, the couch, the table, the floor. As long as the lessons are getting done, I really don't mind where this happens. We have had an actual schoolroom in the past. I just found myself migrating back to the center of the home as I was always managing many littles and laundry and lunches amidst the lessons. It just made more sense for us to use our entire home for the different benefits that each room offers. As our children got older and more independent, they have generally migrated to their bedrooms as they can close that off and concentrate better. Now, as for all of our resources, I am very pleased with the solution we came up with. I also cannot take all the credit for this. My sweet husband and I took a weekend to set up our system. He did a lot of like the sifting through of our resources and creating the order that you're going to see. Since we don't have an actual schoolroom, we had to get really, really creative. But there was one more caveat. I like things to look pretty and be organized and with the reality that our curriculum and educational games, books, paper, notebooks and binders don't quite go with the vibe that I have going. There were two things that I needed to come up with. One, a place to store all of our resources, and two, something that allowed for our space to not be taken over with all of the things that can end up looking a bit cluttered to me. Thankfully, we had a wall we could take advantage of for all of our resources, and since I prefer that tidy, clean look, we purchased and utilized three white cabinets with doors, and this we used to store all of the things and give that illusion for that tidy, clean look. Alright, I want to show you how we organized this. Morning basket resources are all right here. Now I'm not actually using an actual basket this year, but it's all right here and morning basket video is coming up pretty soon. So keep a lookout for that. Our state trees, wildflowers, bugs, this bird song book, which I absolutely love. It's perfect when you're learning the 50 states. These are easily located right here where we can grab and take them on a walk or research when we get home from an outdoor adventure. These are just perfect just to have all, all right here together. This shelf is for our fourth graders special books. She wanted to keep things separate from all of the family stash. So I gave her a shelf. These drawers hold pens, pencils, thumbtacks, staples, envelopes, and other office type supplies. The set Cornerstone of Freedom collection we were given live on these two shelves, and children's character and fiction picture books are all on these two bottom shelves. I had to limit myself at one point <laughs> to help keep things manageable, so these two shelves are what I am allotting for all of our children's books, and it has really helped just to limit myself to these two. This second cabinet, the top shelf, is for our ninth grader. All of his notebooks, binders, and textbooks will go here, 
at the time of filming this, the curriculum had not been gathered. So it's empty at the moment and we are really close to getting that filled up. Nonfiction books are here and all fictional books are down on the bottom. Each of the younger ones have their own shelf with either a basket or drawers. Our fourth grader is using drawers this year for her resources. These shelves fit perfect here and are so practical for her workbooks. I'm really excited to use this system. For our two little boys, we are using uh, these baskets for their one-on-one -on -one time with me. I found that it's easiest for me to grab the entire basket of resources and carry it to whatever location we pick for the day. Everything is contained and it's even easy for the little ones to carry as well. Missionary stories and historical nonfiction are also down on the bottom. The far right cabinet holds all our extra resources that we are not using currently, along with fiction and classical books. This is also where mine and my husband's personal books are kept. We worked really, really hard to pare down on all of these things. All the books and the resources that we have are all in these three cabinets, organized and contained, and it's easily accessible. This really fits our style and the space that we had available. I can link those cabinets below for you if you're interested. I've also got two more areas that I want to share with you, but I do want to mention that I have worked with a couple families with similar situations as ours and you know having those tight spaces. And these cabinets have also been perfect for storing extra games, even appliances and toys and curriculum, obviously, as we have been discussing. On to another area in our home that we have utilized and created storage. I say create because most homes don't have built-in storage and hopefully this is aiding and helping you reimagine your space. By creating storage with shelves or cabinets can be that simple fix to get order. A small cabinet from Hobby Lobby at the end of our dining room holds our math curriculum and manipulatives, markers, crayon, coloring books, and construction paper. Again, I prefer the cabinets with doors to give the space a clean, tidy look. Since math is for sure done at the table, we like to keep it readily accessible, and the kids usually picked a color at the table, so having them right here made the most sense. The last space for our resources is in a hall closet. Now, it's not pretty. It's an old farmhouse, remember, but this space is designated for all toys, the craft bins, activities, and sets. And these bins only come out at designated times, like table time and room time, or we'll get two or three out at a time for the littles to play with and they are rotated every week or so. This is one way that we keep the clutter down and it's easy for the kids to clean up themselves because there's only two or three bins out and it keeps those sets together. This is just one way to make it work. That collab is going to be linked below and will be full of ideas and inspiration. Here's a video on homeschool mom must haves and right here is how we homeschool with little ones. I'll chat with you down in the comments or over there on Instagram. Bye.